I'm definitely in a place where I worry about the environment. I think there are problems. I, I think you think they're overstated. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Yes, I think I think we've been psy up to believe that humans are are bad and they shouldn't be using energy. Where I, I think the exact opposite. Humans are good. And we should be using as much energy as possible. I agree with that. Uh, it's more that uh, burning fossil fuels is bad for the environment. And the reason I've come from that point is just I've spent a lot of time interviewing people who are environmental scientists and stuff and, and every single one who tell uh, I did one yesterday with uh, do you know Margot Pires? I don't think so she wrote um, don't I think I think you would differ from her even more than me she's pretty left um, but she's uh, she's a climate scientist I interviewed Catherine Hayhoe in Lubbock uh, here in Texas and they they've all they're all the same they're like no this is this is a problem um my my thing isn't that I think we need some big centralized government response to this, which would be abused and probably dumb and um, and uh, would probably not work because we know how bad governments are at these big problems. But I still think it's an issue, and I I don't know if we're in the world of considering mitigation for climate issues, like how we plan for it. Or whether there does need to be something that does to, to, to you know, protect us from the environment, like investment in certain technologies. But do you actually think there's no issue? Do you think there's a climate issue? I mean, I mean well, that's like the whole thing. Like, what is a climate? Like, it's this whole thing. Well, a warming of, planet that has yeah, implications. I mean, the, the the climate is warming. The world is warming. But we're also coming out of an ice age. And what you'll find is that it, it's warming in the coldest spots. Like, uh, from what I understand, which is which is not necessarily a bad thing. It helps green the earth. Um, and yeah, I, I, again, like having done a bunch of research, having had climate um, scientists on myself, Steve Coonan being one of them, who dove into all the IPCC data or IPPC. Was, was Coonan, was he the guy who was on Rogan recently? Yeah, he was on, uh, he's from, he was a, he's a professor at NYU. Yeah. And I, yeah, I just think there's a lot of data manipulation in, all, all the climate change stuff is based off of four projecting models that have proven time and time and time again to be wrong. So that's one, again, just using heuristics, these people in, in the 70s, I was going, we were going into an ice age. In the 80s, the ozone layer was going to, the problem was going to destroy humanity. In the 90s, acid raid was going to destroy the world. And then in the 21st century, for the first two decades, uh, climate change, uh, global warming has been the big boogeyman. I just don't think it's happening um, the, to, the, to the extent. I don't think there's going to be a, a catastrophe that wipes out humanity. Humans are extremely adaptable and um, we are part of nature. We've, we've, we've learned how to harness nature to protect ourselves against uh, nature itself, uh, which is an incredible feat for, for, for an animal to do on this planet, for, an, for a, a species, for a society to do. And... I think there are like a lot of the problems that climate scientists and uh, hysterics will point to, particularly around like droughts and like uh, soil conditions. I don't think that has to do with, with climate problems, but just the way we're, we're attacking those those particular ecosystems. Like we should really be getting into regenerative farming, ra grazing, roaming cattle that that help green the earth. We should really be focusing on not creating monocultures in soil um, and make sure that we're replenishing and mixing in different crops and stuff like that and creating ecosystems that, that create the, the capabilities for, for a vibrant um, ecosystem to thrive. I think this is definitely the area we disagree on. <laughs> uh, okay, that's fair. I mean, I'm not going to get into the debate. The, um, but the global cooling stuff in the 70s, that was... That was the Michael Mann article that was based on. It all comes from that article. And he's debunked that himself and said his model yeah. was wrong. The models, the yeah. models, the models. Yeah. The models are always wrong. No, and I agree with the idea, like, modeling this stuff is super difficult. Um, but I, I would be in defense of the ozone issue from the 80s because policy did change in terms of CFCs and fridges and aerosol cans and, you know, policy change protected us from the ozone <laughs> Give me that look. You give me I that mean, look. They can, they can go back and 
retroactive. Be like, look, we changed our policy and the things changed. But I don't, I don't think that that is the case. Well, we can agree to disagree. But like, so do you think there's there's no requirement to to have? I mean, I know you you fucking hate the ESG stuff. I mean, ESG is communistic bullshit. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you can. See, so it's one of those things. that's probably not going to go away. No, no, we're going to destroy ESG. Tell tell me how. I mean, it's. It's led us to the situation that we have right now. It's literally, you can argue that ESG mandates and uh, investment styles have led us to a position where Russia is able to invade Ukraine because we've virtue signaled and LARPed about the environment and shifted all the leverage over to Russia. And then on top of that, you can't, ESG is trying to. Uh, create a, a metric system for an amorph amorphous uh, landscape, which is subjective ideas on what is important in the world. Like different societies, different individuals have different perspectives on what is good for themselves, their local communities, their states, their countries. Like they're trying to create a, a fine fitted metric system of ESG scores that sort of define whether or not your your good citizen or company is completely asinine and mm -hmm. it's again a lot of the problems that exist in this world today are the fact that you have centralized systems which ESG is via capital allocation trying to granularly control complex systems like economies environments monetary systems whatever it may be who, who's who was that ESG guy is it Larry Larry Fink mm -hmm. He's yeah, the guy started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I just see it. I see it like it's just he's created this narrative that allows him to yeah. pick the the next investment products, allocate the capital. Yeah, to, BlackRock's to, yeah. the biggest asset manager on the planet. They have yeah. trillions of dollars under management, and they're leading this ESG charge. And but but I, you, you say you'll be destroyed. I I don't see it going away yet. It's we're going to destroy ESG. Don't okay, worry. it's going to take time, but it is. We're gonna you ridicule it. It's it's literally making humanity worse off, and it's and it's hypocritical, right? I mean, there was a Bloomberg article last week, like, oh, are these arm dealers actually ESG for giving I for sending that, for dude. sending guns to Ukrainian citizens? Like, it's, like, it's it's a clown world yeah. concept. Like it it completely it, it, it's completely asinine on its face because again, you're you're trying to measure and create a metric system for subjective concepts like what is good what, what is moral what is ethical and uh and throughout different societies and different economies and different localities different companies different industries whatever it may be what do you what do you think about like investing in renewables as part of the mix do you just think just use whichever energy is the cheapest or do you think there is value in investing in Wind, solar, hydro, even if it's maybe not well, as efficient, well, but like it's greener. Do you think that's something well, that's, should be that's that whole, like again, like now we're like, what is green? What is green? Well, let, let's, because there's two areas of green. It's like one is like the production and waste that comes from it. That's a certain area which is bad for the environment. Like if you're creating these big wind farms that have a certain time period and then you've got all this waste, totally get that. But then there's, if you are somebody who thinks that there is an issue with burning, fossil fuels and carbon in the atmosphere and that is warming the planet you might not but like you know i do if we're investing in, like we have that trade-off okay we have the e-waste that comes of this but we do get to reduce carbons is that like a worthy investment no because it doesn't actually reduce carbon like the amount like you can look into this like there's again starting on the front end of the supply chain to create solar panels or coal panels you need coal you can only the, the only thing you can get hot enough to create Solar panels is coal. So you need to burn coal on the front of that supply chain. Uh, and then once you get the solar panel up, again, it's intermittent. It is unreliable. So like when the sun doesn't shine, it's not producing uh, electricity. So to back that up, you typically need natural gas power plants to su supplement that, that uh, solar energy when it's not producing electricity. And what you'll find is turning those natural gas power plants on and off is actually worse, producing more CO2 emissions if you care about them than just setting up a natural gas power plant in and of itself and keeping it on 24-7. So like supplementing that solar panel set up with a, a natural gas plant behind it and turning that natural gas plant on and off 
when the solar panel isn't electric, isn't producing electricity, you turn it on. Uh, when it starts producing electricity, you turn it off, and that turn off startup mode actually produces a lot of CO two. And then on the back end of the supply chain, these things have uh, very short useful lives, and then they need to be recycled, and it takes <laughs> toxic chemicals uh, to to do so. And then Going back to when it is up and running, these are massive structures, like the amount of land needed to produce the same amount of energy or electricity that could be produced by a well pad, uh, a natural gas well pad is significantly um, more vast. And then you have the, the conversation of, oh, you have these solar panels that are just thrust in these environments and they're blocking the sun from getting to the ground and destroying the environment below that. So there's like many intricacies. And then going back to the front end of the supply chain, the polysilicon that, that allows us to create these, these solar panels, the cheapest polysilicon in the world is handcrafted by Uyghur slaves in China. And so what does that do for your ESG score? You don't care about the slavery on yeah, the but front But they don't end. count. Yeah. And then you They're get, not Americans. Yeah. And then you get into the wind turbines too. It means a significant amount of cobalt, most of which is... Uh, mined by children. Yeah, mined by children in the Congo. It gets comp- and, and then it feels good uh, because it's quote unquote cleaner when it's actually producing electricity because you don't see all the stuff happening on the front and back end of the supply chain. And then it, it's a worse product. Like humanity has only uh, created step function improvements in our quality of life and our ability to create things and become more productive. When we find denser, cheaper forms of energy, like transitioning to wind, solar, and hydro is a regression because mm-hmm. they're less dense and less reliable. Like we are going to progress, we should be going towards nuclear. And this is another thing: these people don't care about the environment. If they did, they I would agree be, on nuclear. They would be pushing yeah. nuclear. Like these, the I wholeheartedly believe. Uh, you think I'm crazy? A tinfoil hat wearing. Uh, conspiracy theorist or an Alex Jones like character. Like, I completely believe that the whole climate hysteria is nothing more than a massive propaganda campaign to force us onto less reliable energy um, infrastructure that allows the kleptocratic sociopaths that are getting us in this proxy war at the moment uh, to have more control over us. Like, if you have abundant, cheap, dense energy, uh, people are able to do better things with their lives and support themselves uh, 